All right, what's up, y'all? So today, I want to talk about organic pest control. And be looking, because I'm going to have some videos. Ow! Leave my toes alone. Take some. You know, they said the Egyptians, the, the Egyptians had cats. You know, cats were royal animals. And, and all the royalty always had cats. They didn't have these kind. I assure you, they didn't have these kind. You tell me what have I... The people see you. Don't do that blink like that. Like, oh, I'm so cute. Yeah. He's not using his claws, but he is using his teeth, though. But he's not biting hard. Yeah. Look at this. Ain't this crazy? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> anyway, this the video is not about you. Please, sir, can you hold it down? Okay, it's about biological pest control. Now you could fall in that category because you are living and you do control certain pests. But we're not talking about you today. Okay, y'all. So what are we talking about? Let me put this cat down. Come on, Mr. G. Say bye bye. Say bye bye for now. Say bye. bye. <laughs> okay. So the type of products we talking about, we talking about this, which is Captain Dead Bug, which is a uh, uh, spinal sad, and we talking about y'all don't mind my little stuff. Y'all know my stuff been out in the sun. This is a uh, BT. Uh, let me see if you see what BT stand for on here. Yeah, it does. Okay. That's good, so I can tell you. Okay. 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 Okay, so. The reason why I'm talking about this is, uh, somebody in the comments asked me about, and this also goes for the mosquito bits and dunks. Just understand that the dunks are just bits that are, compressed into those little rings but they're the same product um that is a biological pest control as well so the comment was asking about the um mosquito bits if they were organic or not or if they were going to contaminate the water and a person asked me this question i appreciate the question because you reminded me because i was going to do this video before and forgot but i'm gonna get on it and do it now and kind of get on here and talk to y'all about how this works so that you understand a few things going forward and how to go about doing things. Because a lot of times we don't know how things work. And then that's why we're mystified by it. And we feel like we can't tackle something or we can't because we don't know how it works. When the honest to God, goodness, truth is, it's not above you to know how to do some of this stuff. Okay? So, let's talk about this. All of these products use some type of biological way of controlling whatever they're trying to control okay so in the case of the mosquito bits the way it works is there is some biological agent in there i don't know if it's a bacteria a spore it's probably a spore um and therefore when it hits the water those spores are then able to grow and multiply now these spores are not harmful to humans animals nothing like that in the case of the mosquito bits those particular microbes are harmful to mosquito larvae so what happens is you put the dunk or the bits in the water it doesn't take long the spores or whatever's in it bacteria whatever's in it it then it gets hydrated because all microbes for the most part need water think about mold Mold won't grow in a super dry, sunny place. Mold likes what? Dark, clammy, wet, damp places to grow. You usually need water to grow anything. As gardeners, you should know that. Water is pretty much kind of like your life force in your garden for the most part. So once they hit water, they do what they need to do, and they start to multiply and reproduce. Once they start to multiply and reproduce, they usually by some form are able to penetrate the larva so mosquitoes come on top of the water that's where they lay their eggs at mosquitoes actually mate in air sometimes you can see them it'll be two mosquitoes stuck together they're mating 
the woman will then, the female will then go and lay the eggs in water. The eggs will hatch out, they will be in the larval stage. That's when you see those little worms that are in there swimming. That's what those are. Okay, so whatever spore or microorganism, it tells you on the pack what it is. I just, I threw the pack away. I don't have one right now to read it off and tell you what it is. Because it tells you what the ingredients are. Um, it then, I don't know if the larva drinks the water and they drink in those tiny little spores or if the spores actually penetrate the worms and get into their internals and it kills them. Now, exactly how it kills them in the mosquito larva, not 100% sure, but I'm more sure, I know how it works in um, the ones like this that kill the worms that you see in your garden, like the cabbage loopers and um, let's see what else does it say it kills on here. Um, let me tell you on the back. And the other one tells you. I tore the, the book off. Um, but any foliage feeding worms. So that's what these are good for. Spinosad and BT are good for any foliage feeding worms. Okay. So once again, a lot of times these have this little book on the back. And really, if you were to just tear that off and actually read it, it has some really good information in it. These books are almost just like when you go into a science lab. Anytime you go into a science lab, there's a book in the corner that tells you the chemical makeup of any agent that you potentially may find in that lab. So like, say for instance, we're doing an experiment that day and we're supposed to get certain agents. Let's say that you splash that on your skin and you're not sure about if you're okay or not. Like for instance, some things you can get on your skin and it's okay and other things you need to take precaution, wash off, do whatever you need to do. Um, there's a book in the lab that will tell you, okay, this is what it is. Here's the chemical makeup. It'll actually have the chemical structure. Um, here's what it does to you. Here's how to get it off, you know, and if you need it or if you ingest it or if you get it in your eyes, it tells you what you're supposed to do. That's kind of like what this book is. <laughs> this book is very similar to that. It tells you, it has a lot of information in it about how this stuff works, how you're supposed to use it, um, what, what it's used on, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to try to peel it off. I hadn't peeled it off this one. It's been wet before. I probably can't read it. Um, but yeah, it gives you the storage, the disposal, the environmental hazards, um, limited warranty. Um, it's all stuck together watch i won't be able to read it because probably yes yeah, it's, it's tearing up in my hands but but it gives you a bunch of different information it tells you the different things let me see this next page was pretty much how much how, how how much you should dilute what you should put it on what it um kills like it says leafy vegetables including arugula celery chinese celery uh chinese spinach endive escarole head lettuce Diamondback moth, leaf miners, loopers, thrips, and worms. See, it's telling you what it kills. And then it's got some numbers next to it. I can't read the numbers. Like I said, I left this outside. It got wet. I I don't need to read that book anymore. But if you've never read that book on the back of your stuff, read it. You'll find some very interesting information in it. Like a lot of the information some of y'all be asking, it's on the back of the package. Like, stop. Y'all ever seen these dudes where they put together stuff and they immediately throw away the um, instruction manual? y'all stop being like them that's the stupidest these people have three teeth in their head and two fingers on their hand and you doing the same thing they do no um read those books it's some interesting stuff in them really interesting information that might benefit you it'll tell you how much how, how you're supposed to dilute it how often you're supposed to spray it it'll give you all those details right on the package if you just read it and i think i said that before about reading the packages but you know people think i'm crazy like my mother taught me when I was very young to start reading. Whenever you see words, you should start reading. Because you don't never know if that's meant for you or not. Even if it ain't meant for you, it's, you could just disregard it. But if it is meant for you and you don't read it, you may miss something. And how many times? Just be real with yourself. You don't have to tell nobody. How many times in your life have you done something? You've been like, dog, if I had to just read that sign. Or dog, if I had to just read the little notice they sent in the mail. Oh, if I had to just read... Whenever you see words, start reading. I, it don't matter where I'm at. If I see words, I start reading. I'm anal about it. And I, it, it actually forced me. I think that's why I read as fast as I read. Because from the time I could, my mother started teaching me. Yes, that's right. My mother did not wait for me to go to school for me to read. My mother started teaching me at home how to read. When I got to school, I could read and write and count already. So, um, so yes, always be reading. 
be turn the stuff over, read it. And then if you don't understand it, read it again. And if it's a word that's like, I don't know what that word means. Go on your phone. The same way you go on Facebook, go on your phone and look it up and see what that is. You're like, oh. You see what I'm saying? That's how you gain comprehension. Because some people can read but can't comprehend. And if that's where you are, then you need to work on your comprehension. So I'm saying I'll let the say. It says boldest day on the back for residential home and home use gardens lawns and ornamentals for control of foliage feeding worms caterpillars thrips and other listed pests and the following fruiting vegetables such as tomato pepper okra eggplant cucurbits such as cantaloupe and honeydew cold crops brassicas such as broccoli cabbage and cauliflower leafy vegetables such as lettuce spinach and celery tuberous vegetables such as potatoes sweet potatoes yams jerusalem artichoke chinese artichoke and cassava stone fruits such as peaches plums cherries nectarines prunes and apricots apple and other palm fruits such as pears crab apples i think it's actually palm i think i'd be saying palm i'm gonna tell you why i say palm in french the word for apple is palm pure enemy but they get it from the word palm which is the category of fruits i used to be fluent in french y'all pay me no mind palm fruits such as pears, crab apples, mayhaw, quince, blueberries, and cane berries, such as blueberry, blackberry, raspberry. Now, I'm, now watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something. Out of what I just read. Now, y'all see it said it works on caterpillars and pests that eat the, all them vegetables. But did you notice how it gave you categories? It said fruit and vegetables. And it gave you examples. Cold crop. Some of y'all don't know. Brassicas are called cold crop. C-O-L-E. Cold crop. That cabbage loopers don't just eat cabbage. You feel me? They eat brassicas, which are cold crops. They eat all that. Leafy vegetables. Then it gave you some examples. Tuberous vegetables gave you some examples. How many of you knew to call potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, all that tuberous? See what I'm saying? We learned. This car barely making it. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. I don't, I don't, maybe they are gonna make it. No, they can't. Oh, Lord. Yeah, maybe no mind. Stone fruits. I'm sure y'all knew what stone fruits, but watch this. Apple and other palm fruits. Palm, pears, crab apples, mayhaw, quince. You see what I'm saying? Then it said blueberries and cane berries. Cane berries gonna be like, Blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, wine berry, tay berry, all those berries that grow on the cane. So you see what I'm saying? You will learn stuff just by reading. And unintentionally, you will learn if you just start reading. Lord, Felix has showed up. Felix, the video. I can deal with you and Mr. G. I ain't got time. Y'all are not like Casey and JoJo. And when Chris get here, y'all not going to be Joe to see either. Anyway, so um, like I said, when when you read that, that tells you about that. So, how does this stuff work? You may say. So this has it tells you the ingredients. You want to read the ingredients. Spinosad, which is a mixture of spinosad A and spinosad B. Okay, so those are probably some type of spore because. I know on this one, BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis, subspecies Kirstaki strain 2A12 solids, spores, and Lepidopteran. Wait a minute. Lepido. No, Lepidopteran. Hmm. <laughs> work it out. I'm going to work it out. Active toxins at least six million viable spores. Now I know y'all gonna see y'all gonna see the word toxins and you're gonna think, oh my god, it's toxic. No. Um those are toxic to the worms. They're toxic to the worms. So how this BT works is when you spray this on your plants, the worms are gonna eat it. Now let me say something about application because I've seen some people talking about BT and spinosad and how you have to spray both sides of the leaves and I don't mean no harm these people probably just really didn't know how it works and this is why I tell you it's important to know how something works so when those worms eat your stuff they eat holes in the leaves so 
when they eat those holes in the leaves, they don't eat just one side of the leaf. They eat all the way through. So why do you need to spray both sides of the leaf? I want you to think logically about that. As long as they ingest this product, after you sprayed it on the leaves, don't matter what side of the leaf. Worms don't eat one side of the leaf and be like, ooh, it's on this side. Let me go to the other side. No, they eat holes. They shred your whole leaf. They eat the whole thing. They don't care. There's no need for you to waste time spraying it on both sides. And I'm just telling you that to save you time, energy, effort, and product so that you don't waste your product. You don't need much of this product because you're going to dilute it in water anyway. So once you spray just make sure you spray the top side, but make sure you get the middle where it's real tender because that's where the worms like to eat first and they eat up the fastest and they'll fool around and kill your plant or make it branch, one of the two. A lot of times they kill it by doing by eating out all the middle. So make sure you get the middle real good and make sure you just spray the leaves. Doesn't matter if it's the top, the back, the side, whatever. Just spray them. The worm's going to eat both sides. So y'all think about that. When you know how something works, think logically and be like, do I really need to do all this work? Or can I just spray the top and be on by my business? You can just, with this product, you can spray the top and be on about your business. If you mow my onions down. Sir. Sir. Y'all can see how he laying up on my onions. So I got some new onions, right? Thank you for getting your ass down. Crazy ass. Anyway. So with that being said, once the worm ingests that, what that bacteria or spore does is it replicates in their digestive system. And they, even though they're eating, they're unable to actually digest what they're eating. So basically they starve to death. And they don't even make it to become the butterfly that's going to come back and lay all that crap all over your stuff. And same thing for these other things, these thrips and all that other stuff. Uh, one of these actually takes care of aphids too, I think. But I'm be I'm gonna be honest, aphids are very tricky to deal with. Um, but it has all the pests that it will take care of in this book if you open it up and actually read it. So um, and and also what pests attack which which plants. So if you're looking at a certain plant and you're like, I don't know what this bug is on my on my peach tree. Go in the book and look. It might be in that list. You can Google whatever little like it's not gonna have pictures in there, but if it has the the name for whatever it is, Google it and find out. You see what I'm saying? Like, like y'all be looking, reading, writing, counting at all times. You see what I'm saying? So, um, that's how they work. So, now that you know how they work, that basically these microorganisms get inside it's just like y'all ever seen those parasitic wasps when they lay their eggs on the on the um the the, the worm the uh what's that word called the horn worm and they have those little white things hanging off of them it's very similar to that but it's on a mic microbe it's on a microscopic level so you can see that with the eyes so imagine these worms having these tiny things inside of them preventing them from being able to digest anything it's, it's very similar to that wasp, the parasitic wasp that lays the eggs on the horned worm because he lays his baby. She lays her babies on the horned worm, and as they hatch out, they then eat the worm from the inside out. Isn't nature wonderful? Um, so it's very similar in, in that matter, except that these work on a microscopic scale. And I know that a lot of times microscopic scale is what throws people off. I remember when I was in college, when we would do... Uh, if we would do micro experiments, meaning on a small scale, because that saves, um, when you go to an HBCU and the state is constantly denying your school money, and you know what I'm saying, and science is very expensive, oftentimes you can't do the experiments on the macro scale, you have to do them on the micro scale, meaning instead of using a cup, or we didn't use, we used metric, instead of, let's say, instead of using a liter of alcohol to do something, you would do it on the micro scale where you would use one milliliter of alcohol. So you do the same experiment, but it's scaled way down so that you save on reagents and all that, basically all the stuff you need to do the experiment. So instead of needing like a gallon or something, you only need like a teaspoon or something. You see what I'm saying? So in, in class, a lot of times when people would shrink stuff down and it wasn't where they could visibly see it as good, they would struggle. Just like in um, uh, 
microbiology. People always struggled in microbiology because they couldn't really fathom it because they can't see it. Versus um, if you were in just regular biology, they could see it. It was like, oh, shit, I can see with my eyes. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times seeing is believing. So, um, so yeah, I, that's why I understand why people get lost and they really don't understand. But if you wondering if any of these things are harmful to humans and I want to mention that these are not harmful to bees either I'm going to ask the question why aren't they harmful to bees I'm talking about this here why is that not harmful to bees I'm going to see if anybody got the answer did we say because bees don't eat the leaves of the plants Is that, did we say that because this is for what leaf eating pests Everything I think on there pretty much eats the leaves or sucks the sap or it does something. Bees don't do that. Bees simply go into a flower, collect pollen, and then go on about their business. Um, also, bees' digestive systems are not the same as a worm. Um, not even close. <laughs> bees' uh, digestive systems, in my opinion, are very much more complex because if you understand how a bee takes pollen, it makes honey, and then makes everything in it hive, you will understand that their insides are very different than most insects. Um, most insects just eat and poop. Bees don't. Bees actually have different chambers um, in them. Like for instance, when they make bee pollen, I forget how it's made. Y'all look and read and see how it's made and how they swallow shit down and cough it back up. And Cause honey is actually like bee vomit, but I don't think it, they actually swallow it to their digestive stomach. I think they swallow it to another part. Like, that's what I'm saying. Bees are very complex. They're not, you know, like I said, they're, they're very interesting um, insects. Um, but yeah, so that's why this will not be harmful to them. It won't be harmful to parasites or wasps. Sometimes you see wasps eating those worms. It won't hurt the wasps either. Once again, their digestive system is more like a bee. Now, do they make honey and all that stuff? No. But think about it. They do do something similar that bees do. What is that? What do they do that's similar to bees? They make nests. Do y'all know how that wasp nest is made? They take whatever they take. I don't know where it come from, but they spit that stuff up. And they weave it up there and make that little nest. Just like dirt daubles, they go get dirt, put it in there, and, and they mix it and wet it with something. Because you ever notice how hard a dirt dauber nest is? They can take the loosest sand and make it into it. If you try to smash, it takes almost a hammer to smash a dirt dauber nest. Because they take, and you can see them putting the balls in their mouth. And they ball it up, and then they bring it in, and they... They put it up there. Now, what they mix it with in their body to make it hard like that, I don't know. Just like why send a little papery nest, what they make that with to make, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, it's a similar process to what a bee does with pile of honey. Because everything them bees make come from what they get out here in the world and what's in their body. They make that whole hive. They make honey. They make bee pollen. They make wax. All that. You see what I'm saying? So... It won't hurt the wasps either. So people, uh, I, I see, when I see people asking those questions, I understand that people just really are not. And some of this just comes from observing. Just pay attention and learn how to draw parallels. If you learn how to draw parallels and comparisons across things, you will learn. Because I learned in college real quick. That's why I could get A's real quick. I'd be in one class and they'd say something. I said, oh, this is just like biochemistry. That's, oh, so we're learning this again. Oh, okay, well, I already got this. I can just stand down here and scribble and make like I'm doing something. And I would be doing something totally different. So, if you can learn how to draw parallels and understand how lots of things are similar. And if you can see similarities. That's why I try to teach y'all that in your garden, you should be able to look at certain plants and know, like, okay, this and this must be related. Like, for instance, when you see beet seeds and Swiss chard seeds, Y'all better draw a parallel that those must be in the same family. The seeds look exactly alike. It's the same thing with cabbage, broccoli, collards, uh, uh, cabbage, broccoli, collards, uh, kale. All those seeds look alike. Hmm. Huh. These must be in the same family. You see what I'm saying? It's just like when you see a bunch of kids that look alike, they probably in the same family. You see what I'm saying? Everything in life is pretty much the same. Um, just like peas and beans. When you see peas and beans and the way they germinate, they're all legumes. Same family. Um, I could go on and on. That's why, you know. Hmm. Well, that's all the stuff you see. Um, but 
I think I hit on just about everything I wanted to hit on as far as these biological things. They're not, they're, gonna, they're, they're the, the bits and the dunks, y'all, was cr actually created to solve a problem. People have watering troughs in pastures. And when you have a watering trough in a pasture, what's going to happen? Mosquitoes going to come and lay babies in it, and then you're breeding mosquitoes. But I won't, I'm going to tell y'all this in case you didn't know. For dogs, when they get heartworms, y'all want to know where them come from? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes went out and bit something else that had heartworms. Sucked up its blood, and then they come bite your animal. And a little bit of that blood gets in your animal, but it has the microscopic babies for those heartworms. And by that being in the blood, it circulates, and when, it, when those heartworms get to a certain size, they get in the heart, and they stay in the heart. That's how they get heartworms. Okay, well, I'm not 100% for sure, but I'm sure, because a dog is a mammal, a cow is a mammal. Goats are mammals. A lot of livestock is mammals. Sheep. Um, I'm pretty sure that they get something similar. I, I mean, I'd venture to say they probably get heartworms. I've never owned them, and I, I would have to look up on their own cattle. But you don't want a bunch of mosquito of mosquitoes breeding because they go and they go wherever they want and bite on whatever mosquito-borne diseases are real. You know, heartworms was the example I used, but. It could be anything. It could be West Nile. It could be any other type of parasite that they go and bite some animal. And you see what I'm saying? And bring it back to your livestock. So you want to try to keep the mosquito breeding down to a minimum. So in the pastures, they needed something to put in the water to keep um, mosquito larvae down. Because if you can kill them while they're larvae, they'll never get a chance to be an adult and bite something. Because that's the, the stage where mosquito de diseases are a problem once the mosquitoes are adult and they're biting other hosts. So those products were designed to be harmless if the animal ingests them. You're putting it in a watering trough. What do the animals do at the watering trough? They, they get water. Like Golden Corral, I call it the rusty trough because, you know, it's the watering hole where people go to get piss poor cuisine. But let's not get on Golden Corral. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's what that product is made for. And I want to mention this. A lot of these products have, not this one, the other one does. It has this little thing right here that says Omri. Did you see that? Um, and that's the Organic Materials Review Institute. So if it's Omri listed, then technically it is for organic gardening. Um, now, I'm not going to say just because you see that, just go off on a whim and say, oh, it's great. It's, it's fine. I haven't found anything on there that I object to, but I have not seen everything that's on my listed. If you notice Diatomaceous Earth, especially if you get the food grade uh, kind, it's on my listed as well. Um, a lot of the things on the on list are to be. They're not supposed to be straight chemical poison type things. Um, things that may actually contaminate water, soil, crops, yourself, etc. So, you know, those are little things that you can look at. And if you're wondering about Omri, you can read more about it online. Like I said, all of this different stuff. If you see some kind of label or something and you say to yourself, I don't know what that is. Don't just stand there and be like, I don't know what that is. Make a note down in these phones. These phones be glued to y'all hand because I'm the only one that put my phone down for long periods of time today. I noticed out in the world, people just be, they got these little things on the back of the phone like a handle. Well, it'll stay to your hand now. And I'm just like, your hand don't get hot. Like your palm don't be sweating. Like you do everything one-handed because you got a phone in one hand. But I guess, whatever. Um, but that's my spiel on biological stuff and just y'all keep reading and keep growing and keep learning how things work um not just in gardening but in life because you know i'm, I'm hoping that the season of the idiot will go away but it, i don't know because this social media and just i don't know just people over the years it's like it's fashionable to be stupid and it's really not it's not cute at all period so um so yeah you all just Keep pushing, keep reading. You got any questions or comments? Anybody wants to add anything in the comment section that I might have missed? Um, and just add this because y'all know I do this stuff off the cuff. I don't. Um, I do this stuff off the cuff. I don't. 
like take notes and all that stuff so all right y'all so till next time see you guys later